Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Pits of Motor Cast. This is yours, Dave. Special guest on here with me, Russell Sterno, Nostalgia Postdoc Driver. How you doing, Russell? How you doing? So, yeah, that, that, that was a good race out there on the July 2nd for the Night of Fire. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, we haven't been out uh, with this car in like a year now. It was one of our second or third events back with the Pro Stocks um, since Hillbilly passed away. So was uh was a lot of fun. Um, we were... Uh, Dan, Dan had passed away, so we had uh, we had decided to throw everything together and get her get her ready to go for that race. We almost weren't going to make it, but um, we ended up slapping her together, and she did pretty good. Now you were driving the car that Josh was driving before, right? Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For the second, okay, um, yeah, for the second, I, I was driving Josh's old car. Um, that was, that was actually because I couldn't get my car done. So that was actually the opposite of what I just said, because I was talking about the beginning of the season when I got my car out. Ah. Um, but yeah, the, but yeah, the, the Stalder Pro Sox, uh, the last race we went to, I was driving, um, uh, Josh Parks' old car, which, uh, Tom Williams now owns. So good buddy of mine. He had, uh, I went up there, you know, um, my car, my car is, uh, my storage is, uh, not too far from where the track is at, about two miles down the street. And I had a car down there and was monkey with it trying to make it, but I, I've been having issues with, uh, I took the delay box out of it to go to a bracket race around no box. And, um, the, the delay box controls in this car, it controls the line lock, it controls a lot of things. So, for the last, um, two or three events that I've been out, the line lock hasn't worked. If you look at my burnout in the videos, I just spin my tires in the burnout box and get them wet, and then I just do a little standing burnout, and that's, that's really all it's been for a, a little while, you know? Right. And um, another issue I was having is my uh, driver's side door was splitting in half. Um, it's a fiberglass door, and uh, for the last five passes before this, the race you're talking about on the second, I, uh, I, I was out. I was, I raced with the pro stock. I was out there my last, let's see, it was the, no, it was the first pass of the day. I went down with, with Josh Parks, actually. He was in the other lane. And, um, really good race. I look over right as we're about six, seven hundred foot out. My top of my door is folded outwards. <laughs> so I reached over and grabbed it and held it closed and, Put my knee on the steering wheel at the thousand foot and let go and pulled up, reached the shoot, pulled the shoot out. <laughs> I wow. ran four or five passes with uh, holding the door closed. I, I leave of the line, and as soon as it hit second gear, I would reach over, grab the door, and hold it the rest of the way. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. So for the last few few, uh, so now I finally got it fixed. I kind of epoxied it back together for now. I'm having a whole car painted again this winter. So <clears throat> at this rate, I'm just trying to rate, keep racing. So I, I I just epoxied it back together. I didn't even touch up the paint or nothing. It's just it's just there. So it's gonna stay but, red, uh, staying red, or you change to another color? Oh, I'm, I'm painting it back to the exact same color. It's just it's a race car, so it's got nicks and scratches and everywhere on every panel of the car and um recently i stripped the tires really bad at great lakes in the right lane and i stripped the tires so bad that i that i cracked the quarter panel on the on the passenger side the bondo where 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 it's held together i cracked i cracked the freaking bondo wow so um have it done right, get rid of all that bondo and, and have it fixed right. And so, but the car is amazing. I mean, first pass out of the year, it went 838 off the trailer. So, no, but shit. yeah, that race over there when I was racing parts of the car, uh, Tom Williams and uh, I just, you know, randomly showed up at the track to support my, you know, my the guys I race with. Since my car couldn't be there. I was walking around bullshit and I'm getting ready to go home. And 
and Tom comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, can you jump in and drive this thing? And, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going jump in and drive anything, man. I'm, I'm a driver mod, you know? Uh, you, you put me in it, and you're most likely going to go faster. <laughs> so we get in it, and first pass out, it it, uh, it spun pretty bad. I pedaled it. Still in 971 or whatever, 146. Um, then when our next pass, it still shook the tires, but I just drove through it, and I didn't get a time slip on that pass for some reason. So we went out the third pass, finally got a time slip. It still shook the tires, something horrible. The car had been sitting for two years in the cold with those tires, so I'm sure they were just shot. Um, but anyway, it got down to the top end, went 903 at 147, I think it was. 148, but that was the fastest pass the car had ever made at that point, even with the bad, shaky tires. So, we had fun. It was a good race. The last race was the race of the year for me. Um, I was racing my good buddy Dennis in a Purple Nova, and he, uh, him and I left. Uh, he, he normally isn't a guy to hit the tree, man. He normally isn't. And this time, he cut a he cut a 016 to my 021 on a pro tree. He normally is like a 130. Like I wasn't worried at all, you know. And he comes out. Oh, I mean, it was a drag race all the way down. We were dead nuts. I was shoving my. I look over at about the eighth mile, and I'm trying to shove this throttle pedal through the floorboard because he's starting to just slowly inch away, you know, mm. and um. I I I I I had, uh, I had short shifted second, you know, because I was shifting that car. All, all my cars are mostly air shift or electric shift. Um, but he, <laughs> excuse me, he didn't have any um an air bottle that day. So never drove the car in my life. Got in it. O forty eight light, uh, O twenty seven light, and O twenty one light. All on Pro Three. Never drove the car before. So I was pretty happy with that, you know. But, uh, but yeah, man, I've just been over here tinkering around with uh, the redheaded step trial, trying to get it right. <laughs> now your your car is a uh, SS, just like Tom's car, right? Yeah. Yep. Same yeah, year, same both, same both year. Are they same year? Um, I'm not sure what year his is. Mine's a '71. <laughs> now, what do you got on the hood of your car? My, uh, my motor is a uh, Shaft Raw 565, uh, Brodix aluminum block, uh, BB3 heads. I'm in a 1130-81 on a motor. So, and I don't have any power at her. She's all horsepower. So. So how long you been running with the Pro Star Group now? Um, well, uh, when Hillbilly was alive, he was my sponsor. I drove for him. Um. He, uh, I originally started driving in his, uh, his Camaro, the Hillbilly Camaro, which actually, uh, uh, Randy Henning from Great Lakes Dragway, one of the owners, he actually owns that car now, and it lives at the racetrack where it should be. So, um, because Hillbilly used to park that car at the track, it sits there all year round, except for in the wintertime, we take it home and do some maintenance on it. But other than that, it sat there all the time, you know? And it was just kind of crazy that it all worked out where Randy got that car and I got this Nova. Um, but yeah, we've been racing with, I've been driving for Hillbilly for probably four or five years now, um, before he passed away. Um, so it's been a while. We've been running with the Pro Socks. But, you know, it was, uh, it was this year that I finally was accepted in the Pro Socks with my own name. You know, um, we've always, always been racing with Big uh, with Hillbilly. Right. Um, so this is the first time that, 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 you know, it's my, it's my car racing with, um, the Pro Stocks, which is always be, uh, Hillbilly's car. This is one of his favorites, but it was one of his newest cars that he had too. <laughs> so, so what's been one of your fondest memories of running with the Midwest Nostalgia Pro Stocks so far? Man, um, that's a tough one because, like, I do a lot of different types of racing, grudge racing, bracket racing, pro stock, you know, running with the pro stocks. 
And, you know, bragger racing has its, has its ups and downs. You know, grudge racing's fun. But, man, something about running with the pro stocks is just, like, uh, it, it's, it's a family, man. Um, we all get along. Me and Dennis can race three times in a day. Win or lose, we go back in the pits and we just have fun, eat food, you know, hang out. And, you know, it's just, it, it, it's more of a relaxed uh relaxed racing you know it's not so like like you know if i take my regal out i'm over here changing plugs and doing this and doing that and you know there's no it has no maintenance like there's like no maintenance i go to the track i fill the full oil i fill the full fuel and i and i and i charge the battery and i get it ready for the next round half the time i don't even check the tire pressure anymore because i i set them at about seven seven and a half and they never move it doesn't it can be hot out. They might jump a quarter pound, but they like, they don't really move. So I, I really do no maintenance on the car at the track. Now I'm doing maintenance all week long when it's not racing. Like right now, I got the car tires are off of it. You know, we get new tires put on it. Um, and um, I'm trying to fix the delay box because the, I took the delay box out a little while ago, and uh, the line lock doesn't work. Wow. Um, and the line lock, the line lock hasn't been working because it's wired into the, to the delay box. So, um, we've been trying to figure that out. I, 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 at this point, I'm kind of stumped with it. So, um, because what it's doing is, the other day, it, uh, it wasn't working at all. Line lock's not working. The delay box was it? I mean, everything on the delay box is working as it should, but it's not putting a delay on the trans brake, you know? Yeah. And, and so I'm sitting here messing with it, and I finally gave up, went inside, shut the power off, go inside, whatever, came back out to it last night, started messing with it, and I'll be damned if I didn't turn the power on and, and the line lock, because the delay box turns on automatically with the power. Um, it automatically locks the line lock up. So um, I'm like, wait a minute. The other day, the line lock didn't work at all. And now you're, now the line lock is on all the time. I didn't touch anything. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, all my wiring's right. It's all wired like it's all wired like it should be. Um, but it's having an issue, and I cannot figure out what's wrong with it. So, but yeah, I'm always out here doing maintenance. I change my oil like every ten passes, which is probably a little uh, over the top, but I, I, I can't afford to hurt this motor, so I uh, I do maintenance on it all day. <laughs> so when you take that car to the track, you're the only crew member? Yeah, I really don't have a, a crew crew. I mean, I have my, uh, I race a lot with uh, SMT and JBR, you know, D Dean Cummins, um, Lynn and all the Jones guys, you know, but, uh, uh, ma mainly it's, I, I mean, I take care of all my own maintenance and my, my wife is pretty much my crew, crew chief. <laughs> now, how about when you won't run with the pro socks that they get those guys help you out? Oh yeah. Those guys are always good. If I have any questions or anything there, they, uh, they don't have any problem helping out. So what's going on with Arlie Williams? Is he coming back out this year? Um, you know, Tom, the, the, uh, the, the, I'm, not, I'm not sure about Tom. No, no I said, what's going uh, on? Not, not Tom. I said, what's going on Arlie Williams, you know, Doc Holly car? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm not sure. I, I heard some rumors on that. Uh, I don't really want to get into it, but uh, I guess uh, there's a partner on the car or something, and they, they don't. They're not clicking right now. They've been together a long time, so they just kind of gave it some space, you know. Yeah. Long long story short is what I heard. Yeah. Uh, jo Josh Park seems to be, be doing good with, with the STP car. Yeah, he's doing pretty good. Uh, that car is pretty light. He's just got a little 540 in it. Um, but he's flying. He's flying. Yeah. So... My car has been running really rich lately, and um, I haven't messed with it much at all on the rich side. I left it alone, 
figured it would cool off and the car would pick up again. But it, 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 it was the, I, I'm going to drop probably five numbers on it right now all the way around and then go run it and see how she does. My buddy said I need to take eight to ten numbers out of the car and it's going to fly. So I'm going to get it ready for Street Wars. Um, that's probably going to be my next race, I think. I'm not sure if we have another race this month or not. I know we have the 24th for the Pro Stocks. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good one for Dan Manis this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I plan on, I pl- I, I'm going to know really bars um, on this car right now. I got them. They're up against the wall right there, but... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it up for da- for Dan and we'll see how far she can wheelie. Wow. So. Yeah, that's a great group of people that are Midwest Nostalgia Pro Stock Association. Oh yeah, they've always been pretty good to me. Uh, Stacy's been doing a really good job since Dan passed, making sure everything's you know running like it should, and we've been having some great shows. I think Dan would be happy. Yeah, Jackie seems to be getting dialed in with the pink pony. Oh yeah, she's been she's been getting down pretty quick now. I think uh, last time out she was eight twenty six, eight twenty three, and eight twenty one. I think so. She's getting a little faster every pass. Yeah, I don't think you want to line up with Jackie. Oh, if I turn this thing up, I might she, I might have a I might have a shot. <laughs> I'm not sure how good she is on the tree. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Now, now Kelly Dill, that was another story. I don't know if you, Kelly Dill, you wouldn't want to race Kelly Dill. No, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly's a driver. I girl could drive a race car. Yep. So now, how, how long have you been dry racing? Now, when did you, when did you start dry racing? Um, I started in high school. Actually, uh, I ran the high school bracket program. Um. I used to race with uh, Dennis Warsh. Uh, used to have some drag series and stuff like that. So I started my first pass. First pass ever was in a uh, big block SS 454 truck, and then uh, ran like 15s. And uh, we took that out. We were racing that in the high school class. And uh, first race out, I actually won. Um, and then. Um, after that, Dennis put me in a, a rear engine dragster. We took it down to Byron. He had me click it off at the eighth. So my first, my first real fast ten second pass was actually clicked off at the eighth, and we went eight twenty seven or ten twenty seven. Um, my uh, first time at Byron in, in the dragster. But uh, and then after that, I had joined the army for a while. Um, I was in the Army for six years. I didn't do any racing at all. I was a helicopter engine mechanic. Um, so we were, I was deployed to Kuwait, and we were in Fort Hood, Texas, and a little bit everywhere. So, um, other than that, um, I started racing again with Hillbilly when I came back. And um, that's where it's been. Since then, I've been, I drove, for, like I said, I drove for Hillbilly in the Camaro, and uh, I started driving a Nova. Um, I had the Regal that we were racing in Cots, and um, so that's, that I'm working on that now, too, and that's, that's going to be a monster. <laughs> well, thank you for serving our country, Russell. Anytime, man. I was a lifer. I would have stayed in, but... We were having kids, and it just didn't make sense. So, but my battle buddy was getting out. He wanted to go to medical school and do all this cool stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go be a, an, old, an old broke hillbilly truck driver. <laughs> 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 so that's what I do. I, I'm, I'm a truck driver. I drive a dump truck for a living now. Um, I used to be over the road, but since we had kids, I... I, I haven't I haven't been going over the road as much. So So you got two kids? A boy and a girl. They have perfect world. So, got one of each and so did, cut it off. <laughs> so what what do they think about drag racing so far? Um man, I'll tell you what, before this year I wasn't sure. You know? Um <laughs> since we got the Nova back out, we've been racing a lot. Um they are 
every Thursday, it's like they already know it's Thursday. They're three and five, and it's like, yeah, you're going to the races today. <laughs> like actually, one time this year, actually, uh, I wasn't even going to go. I wasn't going to go to the races. Kids came home from school, and they're like, "Yeah, we're going to the races." And I'm like, "Is there a preschool with my uh, my wife? She's a preschool teacher." Uh-huh. I know. Uh, they came home, Dad. We're going to go to the races, so I loaded the fucking car off. We went to the races. <laughs> I wasn't planning on it, but we went anyway. You know. So you think you might maybe no. you get a junior drag star out of any of the two of them? Oh, oh yeah. My daughter, my daughter for sure. My son seems more of the mechanic type. He's going to be one more want to play with them than anything. I think. Um, but my daughter seems to be really interested in it. When we go to the track, she rides with daddy. She doesn't want to ride with mommy. She wants to ride with daddy in the truck. You know, um, it's kind of cool. I actually found a picture on her phone. Um, the other day she was at the track with me and she was over on the short staging with my wife and she took a picture of me in the staging lane that uh, matched up with Sarah Brown for the first round of street up street wars the other day where I got my ass whooped. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I, I I was talking to Sarah Brown before. She's a she's a good friend too from back to actually when I met Hillbilly same same weekend that I met Hillbilly I met Sarah Brown and um there's a funny story behind that too but that's that's a long one <laughs> um but yeah so uh so she took a picture of us over there and um. I had taught, I, I had taught Sarah, uh, Sarah Brown and I were sitting there talking in the pits. So I was helping her check her valves and stuff, make sure everything was good. And, um, and I was telling her, you know, on, on an instant green, first one, on an instant green, if you're looking at the tree, okay, the, the three, the, th- the three lights don't, don't come on at all. I mean, it's those that don't matter to you at all. The green doesn't even matter to you at all. If you're if you're looking at a at an instant green a race, okay, and you and you and say, say you're, at, you're you're both in, you set the top bulbs, okay. First one to set the second bulb is going to be the one to win the race off the light. Going to happen if they're prepared at all. Um, it's going to happen because what I do, and this is the way I run an instant green. Anybody can do it their their own way, however, but. The way I do it is, I try to be first one in, and I, I, I come in, I stage my first ball before they even stage any bulbs, and then as soon as they stage their first ball, I stage my second ball, get on the break. As soon as they stage their second ball, I don't even look at the green light, I let go of the button. It's instant green. As soon as they stage their second ball, the light's on already. You're wasting time taking your eye from the second ball to the green, because the green's already on. So the minute, the second that they bump in their second ball, you should let go of the button, and that's going to be the best. That's how you get the best three out of an instant green. So what she did to fuck that up, I staged my first ball. She double balled me. So as soon as she got into that double ball, she instantly hit the fucking break, and I'm telling you. As soon as I bumped in my second ball, she let go of a button, just like I told her to. And she was gone. <laughs> Had two cars probably on me at the start. You know? And um, me being the guy I am, knowing my car is faster than hers, <laughs> um, I tried to run her down. And I, I mean, I was at her door at the, at the 660. So, um, car was was actually not technically right that day anyways because I was missing a bell flash cap that I missed when I put it all back together. I had a rocker break, and I never caught the fact that I was missing, missing the bell flash cap. So um, I was running on seven and a half cylinders, <laughs> and I almost ran her down. So now we're running on eight cylinders. I'm going to lean this freaking thing out, and hopefully she's going to fly. Yeah, Sarah's a good driver. Yeah, she's pretty good. She's pretty good. I like I said, we've known her each other for a while, and she's 
So, but yeah, like I said, um, we've just been trying to have some fun this year and enjoy it. I haven't even been, like, like I've been going to all these bracket races. I haven't even been out myself in, right? I've just been out there having fun. Um, like, like, you know, most people, like, get this certain thing they got going on the tree or whatever. I do it. My last two races, I went out. I didn't even care about the tree. I just cut my own light. I'm doing so good on the light now. I mean, I mean, I'm cutting 27s and 48s and like, but like normally, like I'm like double five, you know, down in there, you know. So, like, I go up to Great Lakes, you know, and, and we were testing a couple of weeks ago, and it was double o three, double o four, double o five, and a triple o. And then I went to 41. And I went, this was me trying. And that's just why the last time I went, I kind of relaxed, you know. Um, so the, the, after I, the after I went testing at Great Lakes, cut triple low, went down to 41, doing my normal thing, same thing I always do, just, you know, 036, 039, and 041, all red. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I was talking to my buddy just had all their trees uh, IHRA cert, uh, ca- uh, calibrated, you know? Yeah. So, he, uh, you know, he's like, he's like, dude, in the first round, seven out of the nine cars that ran in the left lane all went red. And I'm like, okay. So, this was after we were all done racing and everything, you know, and I'm like, okay, so... I race the I run I run the left lane. Anybody that knows me knows the left lane's my favorite lane. That's where all the fans sit on. So I sit by the left I like the left lane. You know? Um so uh I, I was I was in a bad lane, you know. It was a good lane, but a bad lane for, for me because that's I, I'm 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 pretty deadly on my tree, so if a tree like that just that just shows you the difference in the racetracks, you know. Like I can go up to, to Great Lakes, hook, and and cut double O's, and, and but go to forty one, hook, and go 40, 30, 40 red. That just means shows you that the trees are about thirty forty difference. I don't change my driving style for for nothing, you know. So I, I normally try to bring the car to the light, so. That's what I did at this last event. I kind of relaxed, just did my own thing. I stopped trying to stop trying so hard, you know. And the car, the car works great. It's deadly. The, last weekend we went out. I changed the plugs before we went out because I just did some uh, work on the number two. That I keep having issues with the number two uh, rocker, and um, so I finally get all that fixed. And I'm trying to. Uh, I wanted to set the change the plugs and go over it. And um, I changed the plugs, put everything back on. It. My number six is right next to the to the um, my number six is right next to the dipstick. The dipstick actually rubbed a hole in uh, the, the rubber boot and was taking the spark away from number for number six. My plug was completely dead, and um. The car had never been 550s. Like it's a it's a fa- it's a fast car. Like 550s is, is it's never been that slow. It was around 575, and I and, you know everybody kept telling me all day, "Well, it's hot out. Everybody's running slow." Blah 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 blah. blah. I'm like, "Yeah, dude, but we're talking three tenths. Like my car is three tenths slower than it normally is. Like something's wrong." I was running 575 eight miles and 120 on seven cylinders, man. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. So now, Russell, what what do you enjoy most about being a drag racer? Um, I, I love talking to the fans. I love, you know, the whole experience, the, you know, the, the sitting in the pits, the, you know, the smells, uh, you know, it's, it, it, racing is everything for me. It's, uh, it's like if I could do it as a, as a job, I would, <laughs> you know, um, I, uh, I'd say my favorite part is when getting in like, like for instance, there's a difference, a turbo car, nitrous car, all motor cars, like, you know, but getting in the Nova, it's, uh, it's a special feeling for me because, uh, 
when, when the G's hit on this car, it hits a certain way, and it, it just, every pass is the same way, throws your fucking heart, it leaves your heart at the starting line, catches you about second gear, and then it clicks into third gear, and off you are, off you go again, you're, you're good. <laughs> Your heart is less than that the eighth mile, you know? So, I, 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 lo- I love the feeling of it and just, just going fast, man. It's, that's what I like. Now, if you could have the fans that come on watch your race remember one thing about you, Russell, what would you want that one thing to be that the fans remember about you? Um, probably, uh, Probably I'm a hillbilly hustler. I'm, uh, that's who I am. That's who. That's how I got the car. You know, uh, like I just want them to know uh, me for me. I just, you know, I'm I'm not some big rich guy. It don't, it don't take a big rich guy to come out and do this. You know, it just you just gotta want to do it. You know, um, and uh, I would say I want them, I want them to remember me for you know a good good driver can get in anything. You know, my, my buddy's nickname means a driver because he's like, dude, you can get in a fucking helicopter and hover it. You can get in a, you can get a, in any race car and drive it. You can get in a loader. You can get in a bobcat. You can drive a dump truck. He goes, he's a driver. You can literally drive anything with wheels and someone out. <laughs> you know, so I just, I just would like people to remember that, uh, that, that I'm a wheeler, you know? It's what I look for. So, what was it like to get get behind the wheel for the first time at that Nova? Um. Well, I, it's funny because I was actually driving Hillbilly's Camaro when that happened, and um, it, it, it's just so happening. He had another guy driving it. I guess it was they weren't doing too good, or maybe it wasn't uh, Hillbilly's expectations. And I got in there, and they're like, "Oh man, go make an eight mile pass." Uh, get out of it, pull the chute, blah, 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 get used to it all. Man, I ran that mother down, all the way down the track. I think I caught an 021 light first time in the car, or something like that. It was really good light. And went an 853, uh, first pass out. So, which at the time, on the new motor, because this was a new motor in the car at the time when I started driving it. And, um... And that was the fastest pass on the motor in the car, in, in, in the car since we put the motor in it. So that was, that was kind of fun. First pass out and setting, setting a new personal best on the car, which the car has been 838 with me in it since. So. So now, Russell, when you get out there in the staging lanes, do you have any previous rituals or superstitions when you're sitting out there? Um. I do certain things in the burnout, as you're talking about on the stage, on the starting line. No, staging lane, like when you put your gloves on or whatever, do you put your gloves on the same way every time and stuff like that? I, I, I pretty much do the same thing every time. Yeah, I, I, uh, I always put my belt on and my helmet and my neck brace and my gloves. And normally once I'm in the car, I don't leave. It, if it, if there's an oil down or whatever, I mean, it's going to have to be really, really, really hot to get me out of the car. Because once I'm in, I'm normally, I'm normally in until we get out. <laughs> <laughs> so I get in, I get in, I get my mind set in. If we're in there for a long time, I'll take a nap. I, I'm comfy. So I mean, I'll take a nap in the car. If anything, I'll pop my helmet off, and I, I, I still, I still normally don't get out of the car. All right. So, so what's your favorite track to race on? Um, Great Lakes is always home. Um, I do like Norwalk in Ohio. 41 is a beautiful track. That track is, uh, that track is, I've been really amazed the last few times I went out there. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of, we went out there, they've been doing a lot of work we on that track. Last year. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of work over there. We went out there last year for the 4th of July race and, the track surprised me. It was pretty decent, but let me tell you, when I went there this year, and after they redid the track and they did all this other work to it, that track is that that, that track should take any car, any car, and that and it just proves it this weekend with Ty Kelly and all of them going out there, and and they all went down and said they're coming back, and it's a great track. Now, I heard the girls supposed to do some work on the track this year sometime. 
um, get all the bumps out yeah, of stuff. I heard, I heard they were, I heard they were doing, um, some work with the, uh, the far pull off. They were going to make it wider for more cars to get through it easier, dragsters and stuff like that or something. And then I heard rumors of the track, the track circles being done too, eventually this year. Yeah. Trying to get so, the auto bumps. That would be, that get, would be cool. Get all those bumps out. Do them bumps? I, you know, it depends what car you're driving. Uh, I, you know, in the Nova, I don't really feel them. Um, but in um, Tom's Nova, I did. You know, it's it's weird. Um, like my car, I don't run tubes in the slicks. Uh, I just run air. And um, his car, he has tubes in it. And I, I don't know. I mean, I'm a certain driver where I feel everything. I can tell you if my car leaves in first gear. And it's second gear if it's blowing through the converter, like I can, I can feel that. Like it's uh, a lot of drivers, I, I, I guess, don't have that. But I'm, I'm one of those guys where, like, like my buddy Ron Bucky, he's like my redheaded stepdad. He, um, he tells me that I'm, in, I'm in one with the car. You know, like when we're going down the track, and I come back and I'm telling him all these things that happen. And he goes, "Dude, like I don't, I don't understand how you know so much about the car." It's in such little time that I've had with it, you know, we've done, yeah, I made 40, 50 passes in the car since driving it and now owning it and driving it. But, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy how much the, this car and I are like, we, we really sync pretty good, you know? Yeah. So I'm really comfy in it. So have you reached any milestones in your racing career so far? Um, I would say, um, that 838 off the trailer, I've been calling that for a whole year. Um, I told everybody I'm going to come off the trailer. Car ain't made a pass in a year, year and a half. I'm going to come off the trailer. I'm going to go 838 or better. And I'll be damned if the car didn't go 838 off the trailer. Now it did wheelie to the 330, but, but I wasn't lifting, you know? Yeah. So that was one of my, that was one of my first passes in the, that was my first pass in the car since I owned it and bought the car. And I told everybody that I know this car enough where I'm going to turn it all the way up and I'm going to go, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make a hit and it's going to be from A to B and it's going to be, and it is what it is. And it was, and that, that right there. That made, that made my day, man. That, like, that was that was for Hillbilly. Hillbilly had never seen an 830 out of the car. He would always, we, I went 840 on a zero, I don't know how many times, and we never got a 30 out of it. And that was really cool to get the 38 out of it for Hillbilly. Um, that was that was pretty sweet. But other than that, I mean, I haven't, uh, I mean, I would say Street Wars, uh, winning Street Wars, you know. Putting a gap on Sarah Brown in the finals for the first race of the year. That was pretty good. That was that was that was pretty good. So what's your greatest memory but, uh, of what's your greatest memory of Hillbilly? Um man, there's a lot. Him and I have known each other for since I was like fifteen. I'm thirty two now. So you know, he uh I know I know him about half my life when he passed away. And um yeah, I would have to. I would have to say that. I would have to say, you know, with, with all the racing that him and I did, I have to say, um, the uh, the World Series Game Seven for the Cubs. We were. I was. At, I was at Wrigley Field for. I was at. Um, I was at his bar, Wrigleyville North, for that. And man, did it get hype! We had there was people standing on the. Um, at, there was people. There was girls and everything dancing on the on the on the. Uh, uh, the bar, and it was, it was just, it was crazy. It was, it was, it was a fun night. And, and Hillbilly just had time in his life. I'd, I'd have to say that. <laughs> nah, how about, how about Dan Manis? Because, go, go ahead, go ahead. Because he had never, uh, he'd never seen it, like, all of us, none of us had seen the Cubs win. And, um, he, he loved his freaking Cubs, man. So to get to get that to get that for him and see him get that that was probably even better for him than it was for me, you know. Yeah. And I'm a Cubs fan, but to see him get that after you know because he 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 loved his bar down there on uh, in Wrigley. So. Now, how about Mr. Manassas? What's what's your fondest memory of Dan Manassas? 
Man, the fact that when I started driving a Nova for Hillbilly, Dan didn't know me from a hole in the ground, you know? And it didn't matter then. Dan came up, he talked to me like yeah, like I was, like, you know, John Forrest, like I was just one of the big name drivers. He came up and was talking to me, asked me questions, and, you know, just really down-to-earth guy, really cool guy, man. Like, uh, it's like I'm, it's a uh, big loss for the racing community at Great Lakes Dragway. He's a big sponsor at Great Lakes Dragway. I think he even sponsors both lanes. So, the Gobbler Lane is his, is his restaurant, and the Manus Lane is his trucking company. You know, um, that's it's a big loss for Great Lakes Dragway. So, he was a good person all around. Yeah, you know he'll be watching over you guys on the 24th. Well, I hope he is, man, because I'm going to have this car turn to the moon for him. For him and Hillbilly, I'm going to have it turn to the moon. <laughs> um, my goal for the year is I, I, I want to try to get the car in the very low 8s, high 7s on motor. So, <laughs> mm. so we, we shall see. So let me ask you a couple... But it's been... It's, Go it's been really fat, so I think we lean it out now. She might fly. So let me ask you a couple more quick questions here before we close out. Um, any hobbies outside of drag racing? Making money, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make uh, the money to keep drag racing, right? That's that's my that's my main hobby. Spending time with the family. You know, I try to do something with the kids and the wife at least once a week. You know. Um, because when I do get those three, four day race weekends, you know, my wife's standing there right beside me and, you know, she's doing, my, she's doing it with me too. So I try to, I try to spoil them and, you know, if she wants to go here, if she wants to do this, we, I try to spend time with them and, you know, other than that, you know, um, my real only other hobby is just, you know, working on the cars and, you know, like racing's a lot of my, you can ask my wife or, or even, Buck here. I mean, they all they all know racing is like today. We were we were out. My I took my wife off for breakfast. We dropped the kids off at mom's house last night so they could spend the night at grandma's. And we uh we go out to, we're going out for breakfast, you know. And I'm like, you know, I want to drive past. We I just bought her a brand new 2021 Ford Runner, and uh, she loves it. And but I'm like, you know, I really want to get like a suburban, you know, because I I don't like the cruise control on the Ford Runner. It's the only thing I don't like. I love everything else about it. But I hate the cruise control. It, you, you set the cruise control, it does it slows down, speeds up, does everything else. But it, all, every once in a while, that sucker will just slam on the brakes and throw you through the dashboard and scare the living shit out of you. And there would be nothing in front of you. And um, that, like, other than that. But anyway, so we're on, our way to, we're on our way to lunch or breakfast, and which actually ended up turning into lunch. <laughs> um we're on our way to breakfast, and uh, I'm like, hey, let's just drive by a Chevy deal real quick, check out a Suburban, you know, because I want to get, like, you know, a nice white Suburban for or something, you know, because eventually I tow the car up if I if I need to. I don't have to use my dually, you know. I'll be damned if we didn't pass Toyota, so I pull over to Toyota first, see what they got, and I found my unicorn. I've been looking for a 2007 Corvette, got to be stick, got to be 2007, and I'll be damned if I didn't find one at the Toyota dealer um, where we bought her new car. Uh, 18,000 miles, uh, 6V car, Z06, really decent car. And um, my wife's over here uh, poking the bear and saying, Babe, you only live once. You should buy that. So now, now I, I, I'm probably going to go on Monday and try to buy a 07 Z06 6V Corvette. <laughs> Really? So, yeah, so pretty much when it comes down to cars, man, I'm just, I'm everything about cars. That's how I've always been. My, my buddy tells me all the time, he goes, you know, you're going to be broke your whole life. You're going to have some <laughs> badass cars, but you're going to be broke your whole life. And I'm like, you know, I'll still have the cars when I die, though, and somebody's going to get a hell of a collection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now, yeah, man, we've just been trying to have fun this year and do our thing, you know. 